Welcome to a late night large that knows what it's done wrong, but will die fighting for its right to deny any culpability. I'm your backstreet spin doctor, Aaron Bliss, and trapped in the 60 degree spin cycle is Mike Large. Hi. How you growing, Mike? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, busy bee, but I'm all right, am I? Yeah. Probably oh, life treating you well. Enough? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, but, you know, tis what tis. So, yeah, what are you going to yeah. do? Yeah, yeah, apart from just <laughs> keep growing dirty, really. Yeah. You yeah. right? Uh, how are you growing? Oh, I'm not too bad. I had a, I had a, a mild incident in London at the weekend where I got trapped. I um, what? it's like my worst nightmare driving in London. I didn't mean to go there. Somebody slightly misled me about <laughs> where in London they were located, and I ended up going right into central London. Um, I may be hit with the congestion charge because I don't know how that works. And uh, to make it worse, on the way out, uh, obviously I'm relying on my sat nav. So on the way out, uh, the major road out towards Oxford on the sat nav was closed for roadworks. So of course, right. I try driving away a different direction, and the sat nav continually redirects me back to the block road. Me not knowing anything about London, I. I I'm pretty lost, so then I try and follow the diversion signs. And once I've followed them to their end, where it's a diversion end, I then follow the sat nav, which directs me back to the blocked road again. It took me about six attempts to finally get an alternative route that took me around the blocked road. And luckily, here I am safe back home so it worked out okay in the end <laughs> what was this block road um it was it was one of the bridges i forget what the name of the road was but it was it was you know it had like a an old iron sort of bridge structure and it was a bridge towards the a40 I was, okay so it wasn't like a it wasn't like one of the main roads then well, clearly it was a main road towards where I needed to go. I just needed to go well out of the way to get around the damn thing. But anyway, lesson learned, never, ever go into central London. I wouldn't have gone in either, but, but obviously with COVID, you don't want to go on public transport, do you? So mm. there you go. Speaking of that, Mike, how's the, uh, how's the mask thing going? You had had any incidents, or are people kind of accepting it now? Um, yeah, so it it's like it's all right. It's all right. There are uh, problems in some places. <laughs> problems. Uh, yeah, issues caused by um. Let, uh, let's just call it what it is um arseholes um but it's not been what i thought it was going to be maybe that's just maybe i've been maybe slightly luckier than i than some i don't know but yeah um, yeah the experience that i've had or the, the things that i'm aware of aren't quite what i thought it would be so that's something every cloud okay that's good i have to say when i've been when i've been sort of having to pop over to the shop and whatever it, it looks like the vast vast majority of people are just accepting it even people that look like they might not you know the sort of gammon contingent or whatever um they're all they're all masked up so i guess that's good although i did read <laughs> i'm sure there are plenty of these stories I did read a story, I think, was it on an aircraft? Where, where some British holiday makers, I think, got into a big scuffle over masks. Of as course in, they did. Yeah, they did. as in some of them were wearing masks, others weren't. 
probably a few words had and then there's just like a massive scuffle because mm. that makes a lot of sense doesn't it because if you if you object to someone not wearing a mask because they might infect you then the best thing to do is get right in their face and start wrestling with them so yeah brilliant, brilliant logic. that's what i do yeah well yeah i mean nacho large <laughs> <laughs> um, so i thought i mean this this week's theme i think mike we decided to we decided to make it about the contradictory situation we seem to be in right now so we're we're what what we're beginning of august the weather seems to be a lot more summer like yeah well and yeah 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 how long how long we don't know but it is it is more what we would, would describe as summer relatively hot summer. and sunny yeah yeah so, People are enjoying themselves, but you know we've got these completely contradictory tones and messaging at the moment from the government, particularly where it's both safe enough to hang out at pubs and restaurants with no masks and very loose social distancing, shall we say? And mm -hmm. at the same time, there's a second wave incoming that we need to be careful to avoid and now obviously half of the north seems to be under a new lockdown <laughs> so what do we think of these developments mike i think that it it doesn't fill you with uh, confidence does it when um you hear one thing but you see another <laughs> It's not, you know, you're told there's, there's only so long you can just keep nodding and, and agreeing. And go, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, cool, All right, yeah, things are good, cool. Uh, oh, this is, yeah, fine, okay. Before you just go, this is bullshit now. <laughs> At some point, you've some something somewhere, or is is wrong. There's bullshit somewhere along the line because either either things are being actioned when they shouldn't be or we're being lied to. You, one or the other, you, you can't or misled rather. I yeah. don't. Yeah. I think this is this is where I got the idea of you know quantum virology that two contradictory things are apparently true at the same time. The economy is ready to be fired up and we need to go out and spend and have fun and what have you. And at the same time, we're on the cusp of a second wave and, oh, what the hell are we doing? We need to be a lot more careful. Have you, Mike, have you read 1984? By the way, oh. uh, it's just something you just said. It's quite interesting because there's a line in 1984, a famous line, something like, the party convinced you to ignore the evidence of your eyes and ears. And at times it does seem a little bit like that, like you say. We're, we're seeing in the news rising rates in the north. Obviously that's why they've got a lockdown. Apparently a major incident has been declared in Greater Manchester. We now also read that Greater London is not doing its bit. The R rate is apparently rising rather rapidly there. And sure. there's, you know, there's ludicrous scenarios they're thinking about, like blocking off the M25 to, to, to effectively... Good. Fuck them off. Shut that shit. Well, that, yeah, that was my initial thought as well. But <laughs> as long as I'm not trapped there at the time. Um, but yeah, their idea was, almost, I don't know what, they, you know, what they're going to do, blockade it with tanks or something. But um, yeah, they were talking about effectively shutting off London from the rest of the country, which is really interesting because the, the biggest like, cognitive dissonance I've got from this, Mike, I get, I get that they're desperate, absolutely desperate to claw back any kind of positivity in the economy that, you know, they're, they've seen like the biggest hit in a generation, well, since pretty much the great depression and they want to minimize that as much as possible. I understand that. 
and things like going to the pubs but not going to people's houses although they make no sense whatsoever other than economic um, desperation but one thing that really uh, in fact I've lost that train of thought but let's go back to pubs for a second oh. somebody made a very good um, somebody made a very cheeky and very effective meme uh, the other day uh, about the new restrictions in the north so okay they're effectively under another lockdown and so, and a lot of people were confused about what are we allowed to do and what aren't we allowed to do it doesn't make any sense and then somebody tried to sum it up and said basically you're banned from gathering anywhere with people you don't live with unless there's a card reader there to take money and it summed it up really well i mean you couldn't argue with it could you because that's what they said they, they didn't close any of the pubs or the restaurants. They effectively just said, don't go to anyone's house who you don't already live with. Which didn't go down very well, seeing as it was, wasn't it the, the night before Eid al-Mubarak, the um, Muslim festival, which is effectively like Christmas for Muslims. And they affect somebody, you know, uh, obviously it's it's a minority of the population but it is a sizable minority and someone was comparing it to you know declaring on christmas eve night that you couldn't go and visit your family on christmas morning which yeah um so yeah i, I lost my train of thought about anything else but the the pub thing i thought was very funny because it's like so nakedly apparent now that it's just like right None of you ever, don't you ever visit any of your friends or family outside of your house, okay? Oh, I know what it was. I've got it back again. It was, what was oh. it, only, only a week ago or something, the, the news was coming out of, oh, by the way, you shouldn't work from home anymore. You know? And, and people were just scratching their heads and going, hang on, this is working fine. In fact, some people prefer working from home. And environmentally... It's great, less cars on the road, etc. And all I could think of, and I think this was the motivation, was a bunch of Conservative MPs were lobbying to say, get people back in the office, basically to stop sandwich shops from closing down. Basically, they wanted people to go to work so they would like buy lunch from the kiosks around their workplaces. Oh, right, okay. And it's like... I mean, really, are you that like? Are you really that unconcerned about the safety of the public and also their mental well-being? Because a lot of people, it probably is more pleasant. Not how I'm not saying not being in the office because people like to be around other people. I'm saying commuting. Commuting is generally not a very pleasant thing. People don't generally enjoy it. No, but you can't. <sighs> Um, it's very difficult, uh, you know, when people weren't at work and we were at the start and we, everyone was having to a actually isolate and all this, then people worried about um, kind of mental health then, weren't they? By, because people couldn't go to work. And now we're saying that, we, well, what you're saying is, it's, it's the opposite. And Well, the reason it's the opposite, Mike, is because... I get what you're saying about people being concerned maybe about um, yeah, because commuting. Even if, even if you say, even if you say, well, commuting is a horrible experience, but people enjoy being at work. Well, people prefer to be at work among their colleagues and stuff. Uh, so they can disregard like the negatives of commuting. But, you know, we're talking about commuting at grave risk of contracting a virus. So, you know, that, that kind of it just and it it again i can't back, have both can you no but i come back to him mike what's the point in sending people back to work if it works okay for the companies we're not talking about the people who can't work from home are already back at work you know i mean they've been never left home. yeah so why throw more people and more risk into that just to keep a few sandwich shops open. Sorry, sandwich shop owners, but you know, 
If it's a choice between um, you and like having a second lockdown, sorry. Do you, do you really think that's all it is? Maybe there's some, I'm sure there's something else I'm not seeing, but I immediately thought, what is the logic in this? Because, you know, I mean, the government must know that they come across right now as being quite uncaring, like thinking more about let's get the economy going right and like thinking, well, we've already cared about people's health. That's all over. No, but you know what I mean? I mean, they must be aware that the public generally don't really see them as caring about people's health as much as they did and prioritizing the economy. So why, why, you know, why do something that's so pointless? Because the economy is effectively operating at a level, what you would say is a sensible level at the moment without putting undue risk on uh, everyone at undue risk. And the idea that you're lobbying basically for a complete lock, uh, lockdown reversal where you know everyone just goes back to what they were doing before. I mean, do, do you not think it, it really, it's not very good optics, even if you are being lobbied by Pret-a-Manger or whoever it is. Yeah, no, I, I do get that. I mean, can you do get any that. reason though? I mean, genuinely, that, I, I mean, I couldn't think of any other reason why, why you would force people back into the office. Unless, of course, okay, I've got another reason, but this is even more intangible. What if the, the MPs that are arguing for it um, have been speaking to some bosses and it's just the old, the bosses don't trust people. They want, they want them in the office so they can keep an eye on them. They don't think they're working. But then surely you can measure that anyway. You can measure people's output remotely. Uh, yeah, I guess with most things you could, and it it just be a slightly different way of working, or different way of managing, or different way of uh, well, like you said, kind of measuring people's output can be done remotely. I guess depending on on what they do, but mm. I don't know. I can't think. I can't really think of. Um, a good reason other than you know the the, the slightly more cynical need, need to watch people and make sure they're being as productive as they could be and whatever else uh i can't really i can't think of a good reason sometimes it's like well, it's occam's razor you slice away all the all the intangibles and you come down with you know the simplest answer and that that seems to be it. it is very cynical but i just can't see what else it is yeah i, I, I always flirt with the line between cynicism and realism <laughs> yeah so but generally that, that there's a reason for that because yeah because there is but i don't i i don't know i don't know it's just Because there is, because there is. <laughs> I mean, work it out for yourselves. But all all I would say is, if it was me, and I was, I don't, see, it's hard to say. But if it was me, and and I was I was running my business, and, and I could do that remotely. Yeah. Um, yeah. if it was, I, if I'm honest. I would just look at what's financially best for me. Is it? Is it? Is it? Do I need the? Um, you, you've got a bit of a t- you've had a bit of time now with people working from home, so you, you've got enough information you can use as a data sample. So, do the pros outweigh the cons? You know, has productivity gone down? See, I'd be fascinated. Maybe is is. You know, it, overall, is our output where it needs to be compared to where it was? I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But you look at that stuff and think, well, actually, does that does that outweigh the cost of these, you know, the building that I'm having to run to house everyone? You know, the offices I'm having to, to, to rent or whatever. 
I would be legitimately really interested in seeing if there's been widespread studies of productivity, you know, home working versus office working. That'd be fascinating to see that. There must have. There must have. Yeah. I mean, I, I, would, I would have. I mean, people, businesses, businesses, a lot of businesses will be looking at that now. I'm sure they will. And again, yeah, like, but that's the thing. It's like, and that, I, I think that's what confused me a lot is, is like the Tories are supposed to be the party of business, right? They're not the party of sandwich shops. So, you know, their idea of business is businesses run businesses. So who is the government? Apparent, according, this is according to the Conservatives' own ideology. Who is the government to tell businesses, get your staff back to the office? It's like, fuck off. They know how to run their business. Unless they're, unless they're exploiting people against the law, then what the hell are you doing? You can't start making orders um, to say how businesses can be run. But Are they orders, though? They're not, are they? Well, maybe not. I guess they're not like diktats or anything. It's just Su- kind of this whole... Suggestions. I... I, d- I wouldn't call them suggestions. Suggestions are when a minister kind of says them off the cuff in an interview. This was like from the prime minister's office. This was a communication from the government. When, you know, when the prime minister communicates something, it's never just a suggestion. It's like, we expect this. Sure. To be- are you sure? Cause I mean, if that was the case, would you not just, would you not be more direct and less vague? I don't know, Mike. What about the stay alert bollocks? Was that direct? Or was that so that's really- my point. <laughs> that's my point. But where did that come from? Mm. Actually, while we're on that subject, um, did, did, you hear, <laughs> did you hear Johnson's latest little word game to try and help people remember? Did, did you see that? What he came up with? No. He's got no, no, no. slogan. It's quite a Go funny on. slogan, actually. Let me, uh, let, me, let me just try and remember it. Just... Carry on talking for a minute. I'm going to try and remember it. Uh, right. So Boris Johnson has come up with, it's a little word game, or is it just an acronym for something? Uh, you know, like he had the um, stay safe, protect the NHS, save lives or something. It's similar to that. It's like three, three sets of words. Oh, so he just has a new little slogan. He's got a new mantra, yeah, a new slogan. Uh, let me just... Um, okay. Sounds like, uh, here sounds we go. like an interesting one. So, so his new slogan that he introduced was... <laughs> right, his new slogan is Hands, Face, Space. And he also added... What? Yeah, hang on, I'll explain it in a minute. And he also added at the end, test. So the idea was, presumably, he's got the idea from like, I don't know, CBeebies or something, that <laughs> if, you, if you do like a little, a, a little rhyming scheme, then everyone will remember it, so we can like clap our hands and sing along. So... <laughs> it, it, just before you explain that further, yeah. in his defence, we do often well, stress yeah. the fact that... Well, you, you do, know, yeah. When addressing a nation... You've often said, we're speaking to the dumbest among us. And yes, you're right. No, so so I could take the piss out of it. But legitimately, when I heard it, I honestly thought, and bear in mind, I absolutely have no respect for him, but I thought it was quite catchy. I I thought it was quite a good mantra. So the idea is obviously hands, as in keep your hands clean, keep washing them, face, don't touch your face with your hands unless they're sanitized. Uh, obviously, space, as in maintain your space from people, um, yeah. unless you're fully covered uh, and or you live in the same house. Um, and the fourth part that he kind of bolted on was, if you feel unwell, then get yourself tested immediately. So, yeah, it's like hands, face, space, test. Hands, face, space, test. Uh, so... Obviously, people took the piss relentlessly out of it and made all kinds of funny things about, you know, washing the blood off his hands, hide his face in shame. <laughs> but um, yeah. it, 
somebody made a very funny comment that I thought I'd throw back to you, Mike, because the slogan well, reminded me of like an average night out for Mike Large. So, <laughs> so it's like hands, get your bare <laughs> hands on someone, <laughs> face, you're right in their face, space, you're invading their personal space, get a <laughs> test, get to the STI. <laughs> 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 so there you go that will help you everyone listening that will help you with boris's mantra is thinking of the average night out with mike large you. <laughs> I, yeah i'll give you that <laughs> you will. So, <laughs> i mean yeah, yeah okay all right yeah okay Fair play. I've, got, I've got nothing to say what can i say well you can't can you what? no uh, so speaking of, uh, so that's that's Boris's new mantra. So let's all try and remember that and apply it. Particularly the people up north, because you've been very bad people. You've clearly not been applying this. Uh, <laughs> all the people in London, you know, you've, you know, you're on the way. You're you're on the cusp. You're going to be in big trouble. You know. Did you see what else, Mike? Is Obviously, the air corridor thing, as we discussed last week, has been a minor disaster. It's, it's obviously people are minor. now, yeah, people are now starting to think, is it really worth the hassle of going abroad when I could potentially lose, you know, lose my holiday entirely, lose my, lose my job, lose at least two weeks without pay, these kind of things. So obviously, the onus now is on staycations like holidaying within the country the uk and um aside from the ridiculous attempts from certain people to promote it i just wanted to note a couple of things that i'd read about this uh so you remember we did a bit on it about the beaches in bournemouth yeah so i've heard that almost all the major beaches down south are now like starting to put cordons out like in preparation, because obviously the hot weather is kind of emerging again now. And they know that people are just going to be complete assholes. So I think they've effectively managed to plea bargain some more money from central government to help them prepare. And they're, they're like putting cordons and signs up, you know, telling people to distance and or wear masks, you know, respect, hmm. yeah. respect their surroundings, don't shit in burger boxes. <laughs> Um, and the other thing I saw was um, <laughs> the Cornish are pissed off. Now, now, some people will immediately say, when aren't the Cornish people pissed off? But I don't have a problem with the Cornish, but they seem to have a problem with tourists. And you might say... Well, I think it's a love-hate, isn't it? It is a love-hate, yeah. I think I could actually see both sides of the coin because... Cornwall, whatever you say about Cornwall, the way the economy's set up, they don't have a lot going for them other than tourism. So, you know, the West Country is not a hub of economic activity. It's mainly rich people's second homes. Uh, poor people, like fourth generation poor people who've just been born there and can't get out. Um, and yeah, they heavily rely on tourism. But at the same time, obviously, they're a proud people. You know, they consider themselves not necessarily entirely British, a bit like the Manx and the Merseysiders and whoever else. We're not British, we're Cornish. And they're, they're pissed off. So they are pissed off at tourists. I know you'll love this, Mike, because they were interviewing some people who lived in Cornwall, saying, oh, what, what's the problem? You know, obviously there's tourists, but you always have tourists and you rely on tourists. So what's the problem? And they basically said that the tourists are crowding their streets, not wearing masks, obviously, not socially distancing or moving out of the way of people, just basically being quite obnoxious. And in fact, there were groomers. Uh, they said that some people had actually been interviewed about it, as in tourists. Or uh, actually, sorry, I think it was secondhand um, Cornish people who said that they challenged people who were not socially distancing or wearing masks mm. and uh, among the um, very enlightened quotes were something like oh i came down here to get away from all that 
I thought you'd react like that. So what what that made me think of, well, first of all, it made me think of you, Mike, because I wanted to see that reaction. But what it also made me think of is, again, we come back to it. This is the country we live in. We've got a lot of people who don't have two brain cells to rub together. They honestly think that coronavirus only exists when they're at work. And when they go on holiday somewhere in the same country, I'm on holiday. There's no coronavirus on holiday. Or I'm taking a holiday from coronavirus. Yeah, I just people and their stupidity never, never cease to amaze. Do you think um, just with your... Um, Try and put you. I, I mean, you always have your government hating hat on, but try and put your government hating cynicist hat on. Do you think that the closing or like the, the reintroduction of quarantine for the vast numbers of countries mm-hmm. has something to do is related to kind of the whole let's give our own economy a boost? Do you think there's actually merit to it, or do you think it's let's get people spending money in this country? That's, um, that's a fair point. I, do you know, I hadn't actually considered that. I think that's probably a fair point, yeah. I mean, if you look at, we, I mean, we discussed it last week, didn't we? If you look at it logically, Spain, you look logically at the Spanish situation, we have higher infection rates than they do. And some of their islands have incredibly low infection rates so your point would stand up very well in relation to that because if you look at it in the cold light of day you'd say this doesn't make any sense like what why is why are we more likely to get a spike from a country with lower infection rates than us then when you think about that's where the vast majority of people will go now that other countries might be even trickier it's now cordoning off the easiest option so you are like you say you're encouraging people then to just spend money in the united kingdom that's very good mike i i actually hadn't hadn't considered that i think you're probably right i mean it's not obviously it's not the only motivation but when they were when they were thinking about it i'm sure that came into their heads i'm sure they thought this this could kill two birds with one stone because there's been apparently there's been a really embarrassing video going around uh, where Esther McVeigh, who's like oh, again. A execrable MP, oh. <laughs> yeah, has done this really embarrassing video to try and promote holidaying in the UK. So don't Google that if you can avoid it. It's like, oh. but yeah, so clearly that that's a big thing for them now. They're, I think initially they probably thought, I think they probably thought Mike initially people would be incredibly pissed off if they said at the beginning of summer, by the way, forget about foreign holidays. No foreign holidays this year. Whereas the way they've done it is like, okay, yeah, you can go on foreign holiday. Um, You see, we wanted you to, but look what's happened. Come back, just holiday in the UK. So it's like, again, it's the, it's the cynical hat. It's like they don't want to be the the government that says no foreign holidays at all. Just don't do it. What they want to do is we gave it a chance, but you know, we we're trying to protect the country. So, you know, go to the Lake District instead or Edinburgh or Norfolk, (laughs) you know, help us. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Spread it around our own country. Why not? You know, go, where, are you are you living in Leicester or Nottingham or, or even, you know, Bradford, Greater Manchester? Just come down, go down to Cornwall, go to the Norfolk Broads, you know, spread it, spread it where it's needed. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you do your bit to help spread? Do your patriotic duty because it's yeah. not fair. We can't, if we can't distribute wealth evenly, let's at least distribute the virus evenly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's an, another step towards the um, the herd immunity goal, isn't it? It is. I think you've proven completely right for once, Mike. 
It's all falling in place. <laughs> Dominic Cummings is just like stroking his pussycat malevolently. It's all falling into place. <laughs> oh, herd immunity. So that was a good discussion, Mike. I think maybe we'll um, we'll fade it out there, but um, it's an, been another eventful week, and I'm sure there will be more hilarious adventures to debate next week related to lockdown um and with you know what's that what's that coming over the hill is that a second wave so we'll we'll see how that we'll see anything to add um not really other than just uh, the usual hit like subscribe all that sort of good stuff get involved get amongst it um if you like the page on facebook why aren't you subscribed on youtube uh, <laughs> Look at that you face. Know, are you really gonna that. are you really gonna say no to that face click the like button click the share button and subscribe damn you do it do it now what he said anyway we'll grow you next week people thanks for listening <laughs>